This is like an 11 year old's dream. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Messed up circle of life. Welcome to the behind the scenes of Ragnar Lothbrok versus King Richard the Lionheart. This battle came about when we got contacted by a really cool video game called Rise of Kingdoms. We wanted to know if we could do a rap battle between two characters from a list of characters from history. We went down the list and we were really excited about a few of them. One of them was Attila the Hun, who has kind of always been waiting in the wings to be in a rap battle, it just hasn't happened yet. And then we came across Ragnar Lothbrok. Brock. Lothbrook. So I've seen it spelled two different ways. Lodebrock and Lothbrock. I think it's pronounced as sort of an ancient Scandinavian tongue that I don't possess. Lothbrock. So we picked two, Ragnar Lothbrock and Richard the Lionheart, and we said, let's do this. You couldn't even beat a salad in the fight. <laughs> You're a as money python knight. You can bag Saladin. I'm your new arch nemesis. I've been in the game since Icelandic Saga Genesis. Not bad. You went from chain mail to chained up in jail. Take your mommy drain England to pay for your bail. But no king's ransom gonna free you from my bar, son. I'm eating you alive like the gangene you died from. Hey! Great. We shoot tomorrow. Who invented the royal me? We! Who's the predominantly fictional MC? The! You're a wannabe, mon ami. Kneel down and honor me. Richard coming through with the end like Sean Connery. I love this character. Really what I'm doing is just choosing to play this character to see how I feel about head tattoos because I may have to just get some myself. <laughs> Ragnar, I, I didn't know that much about. And I asked Lloyd, I was like, hey, have you ever heard of this guy Ragnar? And he was like, Yes! If I was to go to McDonald's. <laughs> now I'm talking about Vikings, y'all. I love that show. I love the way they talk. I love the cinematography. I love the song. I love the opening credits. I like the actors. When we confirmed we were gonna do Ragnar versus Richard, we sat down and we said, you know, what version of Ragnar are we gonna do? Is it gonna be the TV version? And it's such a cool version that I was like, yeah, dude, that's the version we're gonna do. I'm gonna lay hair here so it's gonna have a nice little... Bangs? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Emo Ragnar. Especially with it in your face like that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We had a brand new makeup person on set. She was really wonderful to work with. Her name was Leanne. My makeup was very, very easy. But Lloyd had a bunch of like scars and cuts on his face and, and fake hair on his head. If I could get that hair somehow in real life, I would rock that on the regular. Your only son was illegitimate. You out on the side. Twist your spine like the end of the Plantagenet line. I'm just a warrior. I'm not the linguist. But I think the king of England should probably speak English. <laughs> I bet you were doing like a giant toothy grin, like doing an impression of Post Malone. Yeah, I don't know if you can. Are you ready to win? I love the love. We've always wanted to do a English royal properly. Obviously we tried that Henry VIII battle, never really came to full fruition. Richard the first wasn't necessarily first on my list, but he is an exciting king. I about one where you're like, hey, come on man, that was below the belt. <laughs> I learned about the Crusades, I learned about the structure of like medieval Europe. I didn't understand. So this King Richard I was born in France and lived in France, was the King of England, but eh, not too much concerned with England. He's famously quoted as saying he would sell London if he could find someone to buy it. Your real self next to your legend disappoints. I see you shaking in your shaggy little pants like Zoids. We've been able to work with people all over the country now and all over the world, actually. One of those people is a guy named Ross Fernley. Ross does what we call the performance cut. I can explain what it is, but I can't do it. So I just let Ross do it. Thanks, Lloyd. And uh, hey, everyone, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ross and I am the performance cut editor for Epic Rap Battles of History. I also edit the behind the scenes videos too. So yes, by including this B-roll of myself editing, I am later going to be editing myself. Editing myself. Editing myself. Editing my- 
also, I don't think you need the behind the scenes on the behind the scenes. So let me show you what my job as performance cut editor entails. First of all, once the crew in LA have finished filming, all that shot footage gets sent my way. Once I've downloaded it all and popped it into a new project in Premiere Pro, the first job on the old schedule is file organization. Yeah, okay, not the most interesting thing you've seen on ERB2, uh, bear with me. I mean, it is an important step. I gotta make my way through hundreds of video files and split each take into different categories. The film crew do several takes of each line, and each line is shot from several different camera angles. Wides, mediums, close-ups, those shots where they're looking off to the side, they're called profiles. And once I've organized everything into their relevant folders and tagged each clip with what lyrics they contain, then the work on the performance cut starts. I like to think of the performance cut as like a storyboard of the battle. It's a rough cut without any refined green screen keying or backgrounds or visual effects. Basically my job is to find the best takes of each line, line that up with the audio and to spruce up the edit with dancing shots, reactions and fancy transition effects. Side note, I'm actually able to choose the correct take pretty consistently purely based on Pete's reaction. Good thing you hold the red cross because the day I'm going to leave. He sounded happy with that take, and I'm inclined to agree. Though to keep things interesting in the edit, I try to avoid hard cuts whenever possible. For example, when Pete performs the Sean Connery line, notice how he goes across camera like this. This is Pete telling me to use his movements here as an opportunity to hide a cut. So here you can see how the guys behind him seamlessly disappear as he moves across screen. Something else I like to do is to use the movements the actors make as opportunities to have background people move in tandem. Like here we have Lloyd making this circular arm movement. I use this as an opportunity to move these guys in the background away. Almost like he's shooing them away. There's also this shot with Pete where he moves his arms around and I can use this motion to get these dancing guys in the back to magically show up behind him. And then when my job is done, I send back the project files and then it's up to Josh and Javi to turn something that looks like this into this. If you want to see more of me, there's my YouTube channel, The Unusual Suspect. I make all sorts of cool mashups and comedy skits on there. It's actually how Pete found out about me initially for anyone wondering how I got this job. Check it out if you have the time. Thanks for watching my ramblings, guys. Back to the studio. You want to fight me? Take off the tin shirt! I'll be waiting in my birthday suit! <laughs> <laughs> so we posted a couple of pictures, like teaser photographs of the production onto social media, and we got a lot of comments about the lighting and how it looked different. Uh, it was different. And there were these magic light tubes on set. I don't really know that much about them, so to tell you more, this is John Knott, our cinematographer. Hey, Peter, man. Those lights are actually called Titan tubes and they're made by this company called Astera. And I think they were originally intended for live shows, for bands or like on stage lighting, but they've been slowly co-opted by DPs and gaffers to be used as traditional film lighting. And what's great about the Titan tubes are that they're LED and full RGB. They can be changed to practically any color and they're built in with effects like fire, rainbow, cop car, which are all invaluable for filmmakers. When Peter showed me that the background for Ragnar was going to be the Aurora Borealis, I, I immediately thought of the Titan tubes because of the ability to do two, three, four tone colors. And so I didn't want it to muddy it too much and we couldn't use green because we're shooting on green screen. I think we landed on pink and purple, which looked pretty cool. You went from chain mail to chained up in jail to mommy trained England to pay for your bail. But no king's ransom will save you from these bars, son. I'm eating you alive like the gangrene you died from. Thanks again to our patrons and the folks at the Discord writing room. The patrons on the Discord, they write a lot of material and do a lot of research. It's become a really positive source of ideas. Couldn't have done this without you, I don't think. If you'd like to be a part of our patron, you can check it out at patreon.com slash ERB. We have prizes and quizzes every month. We have a writer's team that you can help contribute to the battles. We have our director's team where we do live streams every month. Please join us if you're interested. It's patreon.com slash ERB. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.
I'm Richard the First from the Third Crusade. That only leaves room for you in second place. The chivalrous swinger of the sword and mace. And I kill you when I spit like a pit full of snakes. I'm the number one dick, rising up to make you feel small. My battering ram slams through your shield wall. I'll announce at the next of your things that I'm chopping through your family like bones.